Well, hello good people, I'm Dimitri. The NZXT capsule. My gosh, who knew NZXT would launch a streaming microphone, right? But, you know, <laughs> at least they're launching something. Their whole approach here is simplicity, plug and play solution. My gosh, thank God you don't have to install cam to use this thing. It's completely driverless, so phew, dodge the bullet on that one, huh? By the way, I would highly recommend you check out our best gaming and streaming microphones of past year. So they still apply to 2021 anyway. What NZXT is trying to do is branch into that massively growing category of streaming and the capsule is their answer. So in this video, we'll compare it to my most used microphones, including the Elgato Wave 3, which is on my side. It's like my daily gaming microphone. I'll compare it to many other gaming headsets as well and other standalone desktop microphones to see how this thing is any good for the lack of features, but does it uh, you know, make up for it in sound quality and vocal quality too. So let's begin right after this. Play your games the right way with a much improved Virtuoso RGB Wireless XT with Bluetooth support, fantastic swivel hinges, deeper ear cushions, tactile controls with USB-C charging, a beefy microphone to step up your comms game, and awesome wireless sound reproduction. Check it out below. Okay, so what I'm recording this with right now is my camera microphone, but as we're switching to the NZXT capsule, this is what you can expect. Raw audio, zero compression, zero effects. I just make sure that my sensitivity is correct and this is kind of what you get in terms of audio quality. Now, when it comes to the streaming category, obviously design is kind of important as it's going to be visible for the audience. So I think NZXT took uh, the right approach, uh, releasing both black and white models, depending on your situation. And the design is very NZXT, super clean, contrasty. The NZXT logo is subdued. So is the headphone volume logo underneath the volume wheel which you almost cannot see, and they will address that in the final release. The only bling on this microphone is that LED strip at the bottom to indicate the status. So red when it's muted, white when it's not, when it's active. Unfortunately, that LED isn't exactly pure white. It's leading towards the blue. In terms of inputs, we have a USB-C port at the bottom, plus the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. The cable that's included here is three meters long, which is fantastic. It's rubberized, it's low profile, it's black. You can route it wherever you want, regardless of where it's standing, either on the desk or on a massive boom arm. One cool detail is the purple rubber underneath the base to keep the microphone nice and stationary. Both gain knobs are easy to control because they're rubberized, they have a bit of resistance to them, so there are no scroll steps and there are also no hard steps in either direction. Meaning if the microphone is stationary like this, it's easy to control and if the microphone is on a boom arm uh, flipped, it's the same control clockwise without any hard stops. My only complaint is with that push to mute functionality on the gain dial. It's good that we have the visual indicator with the red LED ring, but that wheel is very sensitive in terms of its rotation. And so you can easily adjust the sensitivity gain unintentionally when trying to mute the microphone. I much prefer the capacitive mute functionality on the Wave microphones, on the HyperX microphones, where you don't interact with any of the important dials when trying to do a simple task like to mute the damn thing. Price-wise, you're looking at $129. And for something that simple, NZXT is really relying on the audio quality and some of its modularity features, like the quick-to-release microphone from the stand. It's a really nice implementation where you don't have to unscrew the little uh, things on the side like we have with many other microphones. And we have an included cover that occupies that slot in case you're using it with a boom arm. Other than that, it's a 24-bit 96 kilohertz uh, cardioid capsule without any changing of patterns. And that's one of the things that NZXT prides itself on. Like they're giving you the simplicity and giving you the plug and play functionality instead of bombarding you with all the pattern features and stuff like that from different microphones. And so what you've been listening to so far is that recorded by its kind of default orientation, default configuration. I just had to up the gain a little bit so that I'm not peaking, but I'm not really low either. And by default, the gain is set at 50%. So if you unplug it, plug it back in, it will always be at 50% in case you want to like reset it. But unfortunately, there is no way to see the gain level. And so that is a bit of an issue, especially because we don't have those hard stops, which is a good thing, but it's also a bad thing when you don't know where your gain is at unless you're really monitoring it. Now, when it comes to real-time headphone monitoring, this is where we have a problem because the headphones are plugged in, I am maxed out on the headphone volume, and yet 
I cannot hear myself. Even though I'm pretty sensitive on that microphone right now, I should be able to pick up something in my headphone. And I do, but it's very faint. It's only when I get to the microphone really close that I can actually hear that live input coming into my headphones. Yeah, that's a problem because even if I max out the sensitivity on the capsule, the headphone volume and that, and that live input into my headphones doesn't change. So I don't actually know how loud I'm going. And so the sensitivity of the gain of the main capsule isn't reflected properly into the live monitoring of the headphones. So it's kind of useless. All right, so now let's talk about this uh, streaming configuration where the microphone is properly positioned on a boom arm. So it's not on the table. It's not gonna pick up any of the you know vibrations from any of my peripherals movement. And this is a really good neutral sounding microphone. There's not too much bass to my voice and my, my voice actually doesn't have a lot of bass. So this is actually very close to what you normally hear. I uh, actually add more bass when I'm editing my voiceovers, for example, just to, to give them a little bit more body. But in terms of the bright end, I feel like uh, it's a fairly neutral sound signature. So the N60 capsule, if you're going for that neutral uh, sound, this is a good option. In terms of noise cancellation or noise isolation, so it doesn't have any of those properties built in. So the microphone obviously will pick up uh, any keyboard strokes and mouse strokes or mouse uh, clicks as well as you can hear. Uh, so just something to keep in mind. And if you do want to eliminate those, RTX voice is an option. If you have uh, banana meter too, you can play around with that. So let's hear how it sounds compared to my Wave 3. So this is the Wave 3 microphone. I love the feature set, I love the sound quality, I love the drivers too, and I do think there's a bit more low-end bass added into the vocals, which I prefer, so I don't have to add that uh, in post-production myself, but the Wave 3 is slightly more expensive, it has more features, and uh, overall I think it's a you know, slightly better future-proof direction versus the N60 capsule. Next up, we have the classic Blue Yeti. Absolutely love the navy blue color scheme here. And in terms of voice profile, I wouldn't say it's as neutral. So there's a bit more EQ and colorization happening versus the N60 capsule and the Wave 3. But obviously the added value here are all those patterns, although I've never really used any of them aside from the cardioid, which is what you're listening to now. And I've always loved really coming at close to this microphone and doing, you know, cool ASMR stuff uh, and just really picks up any of that, those like slight details. Obviously it doesn't have much noise cancellation for keyboard, no mouse clicks, but I mean, this is the sound quality you can expect from a, a pretty old microphone. I also wanted to include this Corsair HS80 headset because everyone in the review said that the microphone sounds incredible for a wireless headset. And I definitely agree. If you're going after the convenience of not needing to set anything up and not needing to be uh, like additional microphones, additional accessories to be on your desk, if you just want good comms, but this is the type of quality you can expect from the latest from Corsair. All right, so what to say, for $129, I feel like this thing is a little bit on the basic side, even though the sound quality is good. I appreciate the no cam software requirement because that would have been an uproar from the community, of course. Um, I do like the industrial design. It's very NZXT, regardless of the black or the white model. I feel like their whole gamble here is the plug and play simplicity approach, which for $129 is a little risky, especially when you compare to anything that is above $99 in the microphone department, usually has that four pattern recording capsule, but at least here they focused on that 25 millimeter high quality cardioid capsule as their like saving grace. But also when you're looking into the microphones like the Wave 1, Wave 3, which have so many extra features, then this becomes like the other spectrum of where you don't want to deal with software plug and play, and you're good to go. So based on all the demos you heard today, which one sounded best to your ears? Let me know in the comments. It's kind of weird to see a microphone from NZXT. You know, I'm so used to their cases, their cooling products, but the streaming category hopefully is going to grow from NZXT, especially with their focus on design. I really like it. All right, guys, I'm Dimitri. Thanks so much for watching. Check out this other relevant content. Subscribe for more. I'll talk to you in the next video.